Um, thank you very much uh, for inviting me here. Um, es tut mir leid, dass uh, ich um, kann nicht uh, Deutsch, auf Deutsch sprechen. Uh, with that, I switch to English and I'll talk with you about Wikileaks Monuments, um, the world's largest photo competition. Um, my Wikimedia username is Lily of the West, and I'm in the international team for Wikileaks Monuments, um, standing in front of you today to talk about what the contest is. Before getting to the slides, um, I want a show of hands. Um, how many of you have submitted a photo as part of 2017's contest? One, okay, good. <laughs> How many of you have helped organize the contest this year or in the previous, okay, cool. Um, how many of you know what is Wikilove's Monuments? Okay, good, very nice. Um, I wanna start uh, by taking a, a note from Jill yesterday. She reminded us that without dreams, there is no reality. And I wanna start with helping us dream. Uh, let's imagine, let's imagine a world in which every single human being can freely share in the sum of all knowledge. The sum of all heritage knowledge, or maybe all built cultural heritage knowledge. Let's imagine, imagine a contest, an annual global federated low barrier competition that comes every year usually in more than 40 countries, this year in more than 52 countries. A contest that engages people, and in, it brings entries of around, this year, around 244,000. Close to 10,000 people participated this year, and 75% of these people are newcomer to Wikimedia projects. A contest in which everyone is welcome. Um, so this is the uh, District Court of Berlin. This is the inner of uh, this monument. Uh, through Wikilove's monuments, we managed to engage with a lawyer that goes every day to this um, court. Um, he got the permit and he took, a, this, he took this photo from inside of this monument and he shared it with the world. Through the contest, we get a chance to reach out to people in different parts of the world. This photo is submitted to Wikilove's monuments <coughs> by a 31-year-old who got on a boat, went uh, to Watarun, and spent three hours waiting for the light to be in the right position and take this photo and share it with the world. The contest that empowers an ex-police officer in Pakistan to travel for 500 kilometers and take a photo of a monument that he calls is depicting the, in the best way the romance and the, the decaying glory of this monument. A contest that enables people to go back to their roots. Um, so this photo was taken by a 30-year-old who goes back to a place, sorry, 40-year-old, who goes back to a place where he was first taught by his friend how to do photography. And he takes this photo and shares it with the world. Um, sometimes we reach out to professors who have taken photos which are sitting in their hard drive and they just go back and they just donate it to us, to the world, and share the photos of the different, part, different monuments with the world. Sometimes we reach out to people, a 28-year-old who is driving back to Panama City on a rainy day, in a gloomy rainy day, and they decide to stop and take a photo of the Panama um, railways for us. And we even don't let the people go away in vacations. Like if this photo is, by taken, is taken by a German who goes to a family reunion and finds what he calls a gem in the surrounding, he takes a photo and shares it with us. We go everywhere to find people. And we do this by providing a new perspective to people, by helping them discover, enjoy, and share the built cultural heritage around them. We do this through Wikilove's Monuments. Wikilove's Monuments is a global, annual, federated, low barrier photo competition with three goals. We want to freely document and raise awareness about the built cultural heritage. We want to increase contributions to Wikimedia projects, and we want to bolster a local Wikimedia community. What have we achieved? Quite a bit. Since 2010, we have managed to collect a global free database of more than 1.4 million monuments for more than 80 national competitions to have, that have participated in Wikilove's monuments. 
this monument database is capturing what are these monuments, which part of the world they're located, and any other information, metadata that is associated with them. We have collected close to two million uh, photos associated with these monuments. We have welcomed 53,000 new Wikimedia contributors to our projects. And we have created a global community which is excited and engaged with built cultural heritage. And I think more important than anything else, we have found a formula that works. We have been repeating this process over and over in the past years and we see that it works. We can continuously engage people and bring them back or introduce them to the project and help them contribute to the world's knowledge. So the working of the system is relatively simple. You have a human and you have a monument or the built cultural heritage. And what we do is that we connect the human to the monument via Wikipedia. We tell people that if they contribute, their photos have a good chance of becoming part of Wikipedia and Wikimedia projects. And that excites people because people like to share, like to discover, like to enjoy. And that's very powerful for them. But how does it really work? Um, it is more complicated than what I just explained. So you usually need to have uh, local organizers. Um, in the case of Germany, this is uh, Wikilaus Monuments Deutschland. Um, these are volunteers, um, sometimes staff members of, uh, let's say, Wikimedia Deutschland, who are heavily involved in organizing the contest. We will come back to what this means, but basically they need to make sure that it is clear to their audience, the participants, what constitutes a monument, and they turn on the contest in the month of September and they end it at the end of the month. They need to put a local jury um, together that will go through all the entries. In the case of uh, Germany this year, is more than 22,000 submissions, so the jury will need to go through all of that and nominate the top 10 photos that they will send to the international team. The local organizers usually do this by working with people like you, the national and regional entities who are engaged in the built cultural heritage. And there's an international team. Uh, where we sit, we do basically very little. We rely on you and the local organizers to make the magic happen, and we sometimes help. And then there are international entities, entities like UNESCO who will come to help, as I will explain later. And all of these entities are connected to each other. Uh, this is a highly collaborative network um, of people who come together, people, organizations who come together every year to make this contest happen. So let's talk about some of these collaborations. Um, the very first thing for Wikilaus monuments to happen in a country, other than you need to have somebody to turn on the contest for you, is that you need to have monument lists. These lists will help participants understand what constitutes a monument, what can they take a photo of, and what they can submit a photo to us for. Um, now, monuments, um, monuments lists are complicated. There are a few scenarios. Uh, if you're lucky, the list exists and are shared with you as the local organizer. Most of the time, this is not the case. Um, the, the, sometimes the lists exist, but are owned and are not shared under a free license or are not shared at all. Um, so there are a couple of examples of this, but for example, the government of Hungary has the list, but doesn't give it to the, uh, to the local community. What are you gonna do about that? There are, um, you know, the community can camp up with uh, the institutions that are in Hungary, try to convince the government, but it is a complicated situation. In Germany, for example, you have the problem that uh, in Saxony, the lists are not released, right? So how are you gonna work together with the community of Wikimedia volunteers and the entities, the regional and na um, national entities involved to help free up these lists and help more people participate and capture the monuments? Sometimes the list exists, but they are biased. Um, this is a serious problem in many cases. It's um, very much, um, it becomes a very big problem when you go to, uh, to continents, um, special continents, let's say Africa. In Sub-Saharan Africa, you have lists that have been built by governments that were part, in the past part of apartheid, right? So you have lists that define what is a monument, which is defined by a government that doesn't exist anymore, thankfully. And, um, but people don't associate with this culture as their built cultural heritage. So you have the challenge that you have a community which is non-existent or existent but is very small and they don't know how to capture the list, the monuments that are around them and the government, the only list they have are the very biased lists that they used to have. So what are you gonna do with that? This is again the case that the national and international organizations can come and help the local communities. 
And sometimes the lists don't exist at all. Um, the case of Israel is, was this case, that they wanted to organize Wikilove's monuments. They realized there is no list of monuments. So what happened was that the Wikimedia volunteer community created a list that then the, the government adopted as the official list for Israel. Then there are the issues of platforms. So basically, for running Wikilove's Monuments con contest as a global competition, um, we need to have platforms that can promote, raise awareness, and be open to a lot of people and can scale. Uh, we usually work with Wikipedia as a platform. This is a platform that obviously we do part of, partly we do the contest for Wikipedia, right? We, we want to improve Wikipedia. And Wikipedia provides an amazing opportunity to us because we know that every second 6,000 humans come to Wikipedia. So if we can get a picture on Wikipedia that can improve the experience of the user, can give the, per the user a different view, that would be amazing. We also work with Wikimedia Commons. Wikimedia Commons is responsible for receiving somewhere between 250,000 to 350,000 photos in a period of a month. Um, and we also work with Wikidata community for transferring the lists now to Wikidata. But platforms don't stop at Wikimedia platforms. Uh, we work with United, uh, Unite for Heritage um, for raising awareness about the contest. The DNK is working with Wikimedia Deutschland and the organizers, uh, Wikilove's Monuments um, uh, Deutschland. Um, and also um, the UNESCO in, in Germany um, is helping to raise awareness about the contest and bringing more people to the contest. The law and policy is a complicated one. So essentially what we need is that we need to make sure that the participants should be, ab should be able to legally take a photo of a monument and upload it under a free, free license as part of the contest. This, as much as easy as it sounds, is quite complicated in many parts of the world. Um, so there are three main areas that we have to deal with together. Um, one is the monuments list that we talked about. I'm not going to go through the details of it. The second one is the issue of freedom of panorama, whether in your country people can go out and take a photo of an unmovable monument and freely, freely license it or not. And just to give you a context, for example, in Italy, freedom of panorama doesn't exist, right? So what are you going to do with that? It's a complicated process and it requires a lot of collaboration and persistence between the community and the in interested entities to change that. And there are antiquity laws. So Greece uh, basically has a co very complicated case in which the freedom of panorama and antiquity laws are both against the participation of people um, as part of Wikilove's monuments. This is um, the problem that you run into if Wikilove's monuments, uh, sorry, freedom of panorama doesn't exist. This is the Atomium in Belgium. Um, before the last year, um, where they wanted to, um, they basically managed to have freedom of panorama in the country, this is what you could see of Atomium. Basically, we on Wikipedia had to black out what is the monument because we could not show it to you. Um, this changed, obviously, now you can see it. Uh, but that was thanks to years of effort by Wikimedia volunteers and also the entities and institutions who were involved to change this, right? I mean, you need, you're, you need to be involved with the policymakers. You need, you need to be persistent, you need to run campaigns. It's, it's no joke, there's a lot of work and there's a lot of good faith work that needs to go into this. <clears throat> and then we need networks. We need vibrant and diverse networks um, and these are key to our operating. And many of you bring these networks from your institutions to us and obviously we're thankful for that. Um, in return, what you, we give you is our networks, our communities, the people who hopefully will complement the communities that you have in your institutions. So let me just leave you with a takeaway. Um, what we have managed to do is to connect humans with built cultural heritage. We have brought them to one context through Wikilove's monuments, and we have repeatedly shown that you can bring them year over year and help them contribute. We have helped them discover, enjoy, and share their heritage with the world. And do, by doing this, we have created more knowledge for the world. And we have, by sharing it on Wikipedia, we have made that knowledge more equally accessible by many people. The question that is ahead of all of us is this. How can we work more collaboratively together to do more, to have more impact with projects such as Wikilove's Monuments? Um, you are in a great position, obviously. You can think about uh, being in Germany, you can think about um, how you can help the Wikilove's Monuments Deutschland to expand 
the monuments list. The problem that they have with Saxony can be solved that. Um, you can help with promoting and raising awareness about the contest. This is a very important, important part which cannot be underestimated. You can expand our community, your community, by bringing your community to Ricky Loves Monuments community. And in return, I promise you, we will give you a very good community back. And last, take advantage of the European Year of Cultural Heritage. A lot is going to happen in Europe in 2018, and there are a lot of opportunities to do better. Okay. Uh, with that, I thank you. And maybe I can take a couple of questions. Up to you, Christoph. Thank you for your presentation. Um, do we have any questions? Thank you, Leila, for this talk. Um, from your, your perspective, what would be like abstract um, experiences or something that would be applicable in other contexts? Um, so not, not built heritage, but other types of heritage. How could institutions try to engage with communities in that way that you did around built heritage, but with other kinds of heritage? here is um, Wikipedia, right? I mean, people are extremely passionate about Wikipedia. In our context, when we go and tell people that, you know, if you participate here, you have a chance for your photo to be part of eternity, basically, right? It's going to be part of the knowledge of the world. And people are very excited about that. There's also a bit of feeling proud about your nation, right? You want to you showcase it to the world, and that's a strong feeling, right? So. Finding motivations where people are excited about, I think, uh, is key. And I think if that excitement is there, if the processes are relatively easy, people will, will participate. As you know better than I, Wikilaus Monuments is not very easy to participate in. Like, you need to put some effort. Um, and it seems people still do it. So I would say motivation is first. Find what people are excited about. Gibt es noch eine weitere Frage? Bitte schön. Thank you very much. I enjoyed listening to you. I have a question there. It's always said that uh, not enough women would um, contribute to Wikipedia. It's always said in all events. But what was the motivating factor for you? What was key? For example, if yeah, I, would, I couldn't do it, I'm, I'm forced, so to speak, to earn money. But do you have another job which is so, uh, yeah? Yeah. Profitable? <laughs> yes, that's a good question. Um, uh, yeah, so I, I do have a day job. Uh, so I, I work in Wikimedia Foundation as a senior research scientist. Um, that's my day job. And um, yeah, this is, this is volunteer work. This is around, I don't know, maybe like on an average, maybe five or six hours um, per week. It's not more than that. Uh, for me, I know many people do 20 hours, 30 hours per week. Um, it is a challenge, you need to balance. Um, I think the, the issue of diversity is an important issue, uh, both in terms of uh, age diversity, but also gender diversity um, and race diversity. Um, and um, my guess is that we are doing a little bit better in, in Wiki Loves Monuments in terms of bringing more women to contribute, but that's my hypothesis, and we need to look at the data. But um, we have quite a few women who have contributed um, and we can see them in the top 10 photos. So I don't know how bad the distribution is, but it may be better. Yeah. I, do, I do have a full-time job, and I think that's the case for many Wikimedians. Uh, they do have a full-time job elsewhere, and they do this in the extra hours, right? So instead of watching a movie many nights, I spend like two hours on this, basically. Okay. I mean, you have to make choices. I love watching movies, but yeah. <laughs> Okay, thank you yep, once thank again you very for much. the presentation.